so wie Kenny Welcome everybody, thank you for coming today. So in this lecture we have covered uh, uh, algebraic topology and you know the topological spinner which really represents the dynamical state of a higher order network. Then we cover the oscillation, which couple only cochain of with a given dimension to cochain of the same dimension. And uh, then we have introduced the Dirac operator, which I hope I convince you is a beautiful operator that can couple topological spinner, uh, topo topological signals of different dimensions. So it's, if you have a topological spinner, you can map a topological spinner into a topological spinner. And yesterday, so this is the background of algebraic right topology. Yesterday, we have introduced network geometry. So we have introduced a metric in order to enrich the topological description and algebraic topology with the metric. And today, uh, we will focus on some new results trying to understand the interplay between network geometry and dynamics. And the dynamics will be described by topological spinners. And this will be based on a very recent preprint that I have in the, in the archive. But in the middle, while I will discuss this new framework, um, I would like also to discuss with you a new quantity, which are, I mean, new, <laughs> new in this framework, uh, in, in this kind of lessons, which are gauge fields. So how can we encode gauge fields in, in this framework? This is somewhat an uh, open problem in general, you know, for gauge field of any dimension. But if you have, if you focus only on gauge field, one dimensional gauge field, so gauge field defined on the edges, then I think uh, probably it's not really made explicit in a lot of literature, but it's quite straightforward. What is the best choice to, to adopt? Okay, so I, I will define the gauge field also for higher dimensional cochain, but that's more more of a choice. Okay. Instead, when you have a gauge field on the links, it seems clear what you need to do. Okay. So, so this is this uh, paper. So this is based on this paper. Quantum entropy couples. Matter to geometry, and this is a recent preprint of mine. Of course, two thousand twenty. Okay, so we start with the definition of what we have. So we have a Simplicia, or or actually also a cell. You remember the cell can can encode what happens if you have a square lattice, for instance, complex K, and we consider the dimension equal to two. So we have node, edge, triangle, or square, polygons, and formed by Uh, and M synthesis and synthesis okay so n zero node and one edge and two triangle or square and we define n curly as the sum of n zero plus n one plus n two so throughout this discussion today 
we will not change the simply shell complex. The topology will remain exactly the same, but we are allowed to change the metric. And um, adding uh, a metric that change, and we want to change the metric together with the mapper field. Okay? And so, from my point of view, let's say mathematically speaking, although you know I'm in the frontier between mathematics and physics, this problem of changing the weight together with the matter field or you know with the topological spin or we have introduced is a general problem that is shared from theoretical physics, of course, on the basis of general relativity, widely speaking, is also shared by neural networks. In neural networks, you want the weight to be, in some sense, adaptive and changing as a function of what you need to learn. And in, it's also important in the brain, because the brain, and in particular vision, uh, is based on a reconstruction of image, and then you have practically that the vision should somehow um, represent the image, and so adapt to the image, and this probably is, is in the same real of research question. So what changes when you change the metric and your representation of reality or the math, math in, in, in machine learning or the matter field uh, together. Okay? So this is a general question. We will focus on, yes, we will speak the language of theoretical physics but this is probably, if probably could have an impact also for, for machine learning, I think. At least this is inspired by problems that of course also machine learning. So we define the metric. And the metric G, as yesterday we defined the metric G as a block diagonal structure like this. And so it's an N curly by N curly matrix. And we allow this to be a medium. And uh, semi, semi definite positive. The question how to generalize this to Lorentzian space is, is for the moment is, is not our main goal, but it's an important question, of course. So, out of this metric, we define an important quantity, which is to be understood as general uh, structure of the volume. And the volume, given the metric, is the determinant of, of this metric. Okay? So, the volume is the determinant of G tilde, and I might want to consider the logarithm of this volume, and I might want to write this as the trace of the logarithm of G tilde. Okay? Nice and easy, and of course, this is an important quantity for this metric, change with the metric, also if the topology doesn't change, and is defined in, in, in any case, also if there are no matter field. Okay, so then we have matter field. Okay, our matter fields are, of course, with no surprise for us, topological spinner. So these are topological spinners. And let me allow to represent as P and C to be understood as bosonic topological spinner and fermionic topological spinner, although we don't quantize yet here. And these are represented as in the canonic time basis as vector. So you will have here. Zero cochain, the one cochain, and the two cochain, and psi also can be represented as a zero cochain, 
excite the Wanko chain and excite the that to n dimensional vector. And of course, we like and, and we introduce also gamma matrices, gamma zero, which is identity in with alternating sum in the diagonal. Okay, and therefore for this fermionic state we are allowed to define something which is psi bar and we we represent this psi bar in matrix form as gamma zero psi. Okay, so until now is practically a recap of what we have discussed just uh, with this new definition of the volume. Now we want to couple the geometry to the matter field. But before we do that, I want to make a detour and introduce something new, which are also the gauge field. Okay? So how the gauge field might... Uh, we, we, will, we will practically want to have a, a, an action that in which the metric somehow is affected by this matter field, okay? But before to do that, we define how we introduce gauge fields, and this is something uh, I think interesting. Uh, so this gauge field, uh, This gauge field will modify the boundary operator and the Dirac operator. Okay? So uh, we will only consider abelian, and an open problem is how to do non abelian, but for the moment let's, let's stick to that. Um, so you remember, right, the boundary operator as we defined it. Um, is a matrix Bn is represented by a matrix Bn which is a n n minus one times an n matrix. Okay. With element the n element alpha and alpha prime, you remember these are values 0, 1 and minus 1, so we should, we have, we have always discussed this 1 if alpha is adjacent and at the same orientation of alpha prime, minus 1 if alpha is adjacent but has opposite uh, orientation than alpha prime, and 0 otherwise. So now we want to introduce a kind of rotation. So when we go from node to edges, we want to introduce a rotation. Uh, and uh, in this rotation, we depend if I start from a source node or, or not. So what I, or a target node. So what I do is that from this definition, I decompose the two definitions into two terms. The matrix which encode only for the positive entry and the matrix that encode only for the negative entry. Okay? So I will have B n plus element alpha and alpha prime, which has element one if alpha is adjacent to alpha prime and similarly oriented and zero otherwise. So I have a question. So the source node is always the one which comes first in ordering, right? Yeah. So if I have a link one, two, that's from source to drain. Yeah. If I have five, three, 
This is from drain to source. That's the way this is. This yeah, it, yeah, we okay. can use this convention. Of course, you can. No, no, uh, one can change, but that's a legal yeah, convention. Yeah, yeah. And then we will define the sorry the m minus, of course, which elements alpha and alpha prime, which have, will have only negative entry and only this negative entry, so minus 1 if alpha and alpha prime are addition but opposely oriented and 0 otherwise. Okay? So nice and easy. Now we introduce uh, the, the gauge field. So we introduce the gauge field as one cochain or two cochains. Okay, so that typically is one cochain, it's a one cochain gauge field. But I want to stick to this example, so I will define also for two cochain. This is a choice that I made for two cochain, but for one cochain it will be, I mean, something I, I believe is, is, is the way to go. Okay? So for two cochain there are different choices that you can. So we will define M cochain A N, okay? So define on N dimensional simplicial complex for N greater or equal than one. So for NAS is really for one and two. And out of this cochain, which is represented with all, for instance, all the links, the one, the one cochain is defined on all the links, we construct a matrix, and this we construct a n, n, n times n, n diagonal matrix, which in the diagonal as the then cochain. Okay? So we will define this A at N such that A at N alpha alpha is equal to A at alpha. So we'll take the diagonal of, of the one cochain. Okay. okay, now we are ready to define the gauge field. And we will define at least for one cochain as chief. Okay? And the way to do that is to define a new boundary operator, which will depend on the gauge field. And this will be B N plus E the minus i uh, i and um, plus b and minus e to the minus e. EN is a coupling between uh, the, which, which uh, is, 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 is like a charge, we can al allow to be different from one cochain and two cochain. So this is a way that at least for one dimensional cochain consists of considering sheaf that we will not discuss here, but it exists and you can look at it later. So, so, so this is sheep for n equal to 1. For n equal to 2, there are some consistency uh, um, uh, set, um, constraints that define sheep that are not always satisfied. Here. But for n equal to 1, this is, this is really following the description. Why we believe this is a nice choice? First of all, 
because this leads to a minimal substitution. So if EM is much smaller than 1, okay, I can write this. Uh, B plus plus B minus, right? And this is just my BN. Okay? B plus plus B minus. And then I have minus E, B, N, B plus N, A, X, N. And then I have. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a plus. Yeah. There's a plus. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah, yeah. There is a plus here, yeah. and then I have minus e. A plus. Uh, uh, um, okay. So, um, <coughs> ah, okay. Uh, okay. Plus. So, uh, okay. Uh, uh, minus. plus minus Bn minus. So this is uh, a matrix uh, Cn which only contains 1 and is 1 if A is positively oriented or A is negatively oriented with n prime, with alpha prime and 0 otherwise. So this is a sort of adjacency in some sense, and so this uh, I can write this as the boundary operator minus E E N C N A F, and I call this minimal substitution. Okay, minimal. I want to go and try to convince you furthermore that this is a good choice and because this choice of the boundary operator leads to a graph Laplacian so a graph Laplacian will be the final term of this shift kind of boundary operator and the graph Laplacian in this case becomes what is called the magnetic Laplacian which is important to study for instance the off standard pattern line. Okay? So let me just uh, show you this connection. Let us define L0 as B1A, B1A. It, it would have been transposed, but now, of course, I put dagger. Okay? Would have been transposed for the traditional expression of the graph of passion, but now. The boundary operator is complex, so we do um, we do the the complex the the the, the, the dagger. Okay. So um, in order to show you that this is the magnetic Laplacian. Consider a triangle. Okay, this is an empty triangle. This 
is an empty triangle with a given orientation induced by the nodal labels. But now I put a magnetic field inside. And so my choice of the one crochet will be A12 is equal A23 is equal minus A13 is equal to A. Okay, so that the circuitation will lead me to the magnetic field. Okay. Um, so we write B1. Uh, so B1 A, this will be between 1, 2, and 3, and here I have 1, 2, 2, 3, and 1, 3. Okay, I'm, I'm looking here. So, um, uh, 1, 2, I start from 1 and I end in 2. So I will add a minus here and a plus here. And here I will add e to the plus. Let me forget about the 1 in the e. e. A, 1, 2, and here I will add e to the minus I, E, A, 1, 2, 0. Here, to 3, I do the same, so I go from 2. Uh, should not be, should be the opposite. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Here, I go from, from, from 2, so it's minus, minus, plus, plus. And here again, minus, minus, and plus, plus. Shouldn't all signs be positive? Because uh, this is definitely defined the, by B plus and B minus. No, B, B, and Ah, and oh, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so, uh, let me just remove the indices. So, 1, 2 is A, 2, 3 is A, and 1, 3 is minus A, so I should put minus here, plus here, and minus here. And I do this. Okay? This is my B1A. And now I write the Laplace. So the Laplace uh, L0, which will be the magnetic one will be B1A, B1A dagger, so L0 magnetic will be the matrix that we have there, so add me if I get it wrong, so it should be the same as that, so it should be E to the minus This is on the edge 1, 2, then we have the edge uh, 2, 3, and then we have the edge 1, 3, but with a different convention of the A. So here we have a minus, but we have a plus, and here we have a plus, but we have a minus in this spot. Okay, this is B1. Need to do now the uh, transpose conjugate. So let me, if 
back to that. So here you have um, transpose and conjugate, e to the minus e a to a, um, zero, then here we need to take this column, so we have zero minus e to the i e a and e to the minus e e a, and then we have e, e to the minus e, I hope we are going we are going to show what I want, but e to the i. Okay. So if everything is correct, when we do the, the row, we should get something real and given by the degree. So this by this is one, and this by this is also one, right? So this is exactly two. It's useful in any case to go to this detail to, to convince, but um, I don't know. <laughs> Just, uh, so this is two, and if you do uh, row by color, uh, here you have a minus, and you have minus e and minus e, so you have a face for the off diagonal, which is related to the value of the cochain. So this will be an element one, two. And this will, um, uh, will be minus e to the minus 2 e e a. So is minus, uh, is minus 2 the value of the 1, 2, the cochain in the link in the edge 1, 2. Okay? So if I do row by color, I have uh, again the same minus e the minus 2 uh, and this positive uh, this positive? it should yeah, yeah. be positive, ok uh, I don't see that it's positive now uh, yeah, it's positive it plus uh, ah, plus okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. it should be positive because the cochain in 1, 3 change is minus a yeah. right? And so you can fill this up. And so here you will have e to the 2i e a. So it should be with the minus in front. It should be a Hermitian matrix. And here the entry is, is the entries of 2, 3. So this should be minus. And this should be. So this has the shape of the magnetic Laplacian, which is defined as the diagonal matrix of the degree. And then, uh, I don't use A because A is now for the history. <laughs> so I use M, but it's a kind of complicated adjacent symmetric. I use M because of magnetic. And then you have that M. Uh, Rs is equal to uh, e to the 2i a Rs if Rs is an edge is an edge of R1 okay? and 0 and this is the Definition of the magnetic. This definition here is the magnetic. Laplace. So, for given choice of this, this 
stage field, you can get the standard uh, standard butterfly, right? So if you are on a square lattice and you have magnetic fields on each of these empty square, you define a, a, a one chain on the y axis that is proportional to the magnetic field and the coordinate x and y in the x axis is zero. This will give you a non-trivial non circulation here. And you get the, the standard value. Alright, right. And the definition of M, should there be the little E in the Ah yes. And if you want, you can rescate the E by two in order <laughs> yeah, to, to remove this. Two. Okay, is that good? So this is, I think, it's kind of a useful thing, and it's quite quite useful to understand how the edge field can be connected. So in the definition of M, the first condition is if R S is in the edges. A is it the edges? Yeah. You will not have this element if they are not that. Okay. Okay, perfect. So we have defined our main character, the geometry, the matter field with topological spinner, and the gauge field. Okay. Now, um, until now, this boundary operator is not yet coupled with the metric, so we want to couple then this boundary operator as well with the metric, not only with the gauge field. So in order to do that, we, we will proceed as yesterday, essentially. So instead of working with the boundary operator without gauge field, we will work with the boundary operator with the gauge field. Okay? So just this difference. So So we will define the Steeler, I mean our goal more than the boundary operator is to define the Dirac equation, the Dirac operator. Um, so we will define the Steeler derivative first. And this is D. And we will define as G our M curly but M curly matrix. We will use this symmetric definition of the stereo derivative. So 0, 0, 0. Here we had B1 transpose. Now we have B1A dagger. <coughs> 0, 0, 0, and here we, we had yesterday B2 transpose, we will have B2A dagger, 0, and this is sandwich with a G, as yesterday. And of course, our main player will be the Dirac operator. And the Dirac operator will be we will just D equal D plus D star, but we are working in the symmetric picture, so it's just D dagger. And from this D, we are always we practically define the gauss bonnet Laplacian and this square can be the gauss bonnet Okay, All this will include, of course, the metric. So inside the Dirac operator, there is the metric, because it's expressed in terms of the metric, uh, the steel of the liberty. Are there questions? Just I have a curiosity, I mean, how do you see the gauge invariance 
I mean, so far you have come in, okay, I'm just using a one point chain as my gauge P. Mm -hmm. But it's not, uh, okay, uh, maybe it's apparent, but I cannot see where gauge invariance is. Yeah, so this is an open question. Okay. But uh, the idea is that you might, at least, you, uh, you might, you know, if you, if you want to multiply the topological spinner by a phase, and also a local phase, you can do that, right? By absorbing it into the A's. Uh, absorbing this. So it is explicit, one just has to do the substitution like one does. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I tried to do it in a paper, mm -hmm. but I think I, I didn't do it completely okay, okay. Cor correctly. And also you might want to do non-abelian transformation, that's more tricky. But yes, so this is this is a search question essentially. Just this is a, a, a way to formalize things that I think is, for as far as I understand, is a little bit personal for the moment. But I think it's quite it's quite straight, straightforward. What, what I tell you now. Okay, so let me prepare by for this discussion next. Uh, so now we have the basic element. So we have the geometry, we have the mapper field, we have the gauge field. And we want to define an action that combines that together. Okay? So that the metric will depend on the mapper field and the gauge field and so on. Than best verbs. And as I mentioned, this is a general question spanned from theoretical physics to uh, machine learning, etc. and brain reserve. So, let me just uh, uh, tell you what I think is, it can be a good action to consider. Information theory is quite powerful, which captures the interaction between the metric degree of freedom and the, the matter degree of freedom. So we have, of course, one contribution which we have already discussed, which is the volume, the volume associated to the metric that should probably be taken into account, and we. Sorry. We, we write essentially the logarithm of the volume. The volume is monotonic. The logarithm is monotonic, so I can take the, the logarithm of the volume. And then I want to add an extra term which depends on the interaction between the metric and the matter field. So my picture is that I have a network. And on top of this network, I have some form of metric G, which can define a metric on this object. And on the other side, I have always the network. But now I consider all the mapper field defined on all the nodes, all the edges, and all the square. And I want to define a metric G which will be the metric induced by the mapper field. And what I want to say is that one tries to be like the other. So what the idea is to write a quantum relative entropy between these two matrices. Okay, G is positively defined. And so we want to write trace of G, logarithm of G, minus trace of G, logarithm of G. And since this matrix, though, 
I'm not exactly, I'm not phase one in general. I allow myself to add an extra term, which will be proportional to the trace. Okay? So what's in front of the trace in the next to the equal sign? Sigma. 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 Sigma is a constant, and we will uh, we will show what, what is the interpretation for sigma. Okay. So, so just a, I also have a question. So the way you are coupling this uh, this uh, MEG with the matter fields, is it somehow reminiscent of the fact that if the matter field has exactly the same configuration of the gauge fields, uh, this gives zero action type contribution or energetic contribution? Because I would like to see what is the physical meaning of the second and third term. I mean, if, if there is, I mean, maybe there is not, and then we should just go ahead. Yeah, I, 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 maybe it will become clear okay. later so because I, we will need to specify what we take for, for G, right? Yes. For the matter. For the matter. You mean. For the matter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. So the question indeed is how to choose G. Sorry, the third term is trace of G. Uh, Log G, not curly. That, that, yes, okay, that okay. is G. Right? So yeah. this is the. And it's one curly and one not curly. This yeah. is quantum relative yeah, entropy. Okay. Uh, and this is the logarithm of the volume. from the first fundamental form of Gauss. So if you have a function, point-wise you define one form. And the one form takes the value, if you have a, a square lattice to start with, the function defined on a square lattice, and so you can consider the coordinate x, y, and so that this is the Gauss form, is, is given by this. So this can be expressed as the identity plus the outer product between the gradient of f and the gradient of f. Okay. This is the first fundamental form by Gauss for surfaces. Okay? So, the idea is to start with, with something similar. So, identity plus D, let me call phi, topological spinner, phi D. Okay? So, that's exactly the translation of the exterior geometry described by Gauss. And the fact though is that here you realize something that you are writing kind of uh, some, some kind of factor or projector and you can continue on. Right? To write anything you can write with any topological spinner and any data cooperator. Right? So first of all can add plus M0 phi phi. Then if you have a fermionic term, you can add something that depends only once from the Dirac. You want to construct something that is Hermitian. Put an I in front, so there is a minus here. So, without the I. Uh, 
and we can add minus five Pythagoras plus Pythagoras Pythagoras. So you can add the third, and actually you can also add these are terms that depend on the matter, but you can possibly also add term that depends only on the gauge field. Okay, yeah, this term they depend on the gauge field because here D there is a metric and there is the gauge field. But actually you can uh, you can also have terms that are only depending on the gauge field and the metric, not on the matter. And this, for instance, you have, you have when you have a manifold, and then you remember we define these things like you have the Dirac in the direction x and the Dirac in the direction y, so you have terms like dx, dy, anti-commutator, you can do the square, you can play with that. But I, I will not discuss this issue. In the paper, I discussed this. Now I will not discuss this, but you can also have term that is reminiscent of the curvature in some sense because they don't depend on the matter, they all depend on the gauge and the geometry. But in general, you can continue adding things. Right? So let me just tell you something more because this is a choice which I made. Possibly questionable, possibly very. A, a choice that is really revealing my, um, my, my bias because this object here is different from that because this is the phi is a fully connected matrix so you have a spinner on all the nodes all the edges on all the triangle you do outer product it's not local while this is local on each node of your manifold this object here is not so what I did is I added here another mark product which specified so that eta is only one if the synthesis are upper or lower adjacent. Okay? So for instance here you would like to have something only on the edge that are incident to a node. Okay? So my choice is to take eta alpha and alpha prime equal to 1 if alpha and alpha prime are either upper or lower adjacent and with this definition I define that one simplex is lower adjacent to itself so you are also at the diagonal and zero otherwise. And here I also add a theta. Uh, no, sorry, here you have a eta again. And here they find a theta. Theta. And the theta, also because also this is fully connected, this kind of master. So I take a theta that is theta alpha alpha prime, only one if alpha is equal to alpha prime and theta alpha and alpha prime zero otherwise. So, yeah, maybe uh, I tell you something and then we discuss this action and the motion in the next hour, but what I want to tell you is that this action uh, when you minimize the action with respect to the matter field, you get either the claim Gordon for the bosonic degree of freedom or the Dirac equation for the fermionic degree of freedom. So this is essentially an information theory action which with this particular choice of the metric in use by the matter field leads to the relativistic equation in the discrete. Okay? Discrete and Euclidean. Okay.
So I don't know if there are questions, otherwise I think this is a nice moment to stop. Maybe I can ask a question. So there is also this residual term in the definition of the entropy, this trace of G curly only. With this one? Yeah. So what's uh, where does that come from? Yeah, because if you define the von Neumann entropy, you define for density matrices. And density matrices have trace one. Okay? And so uh, In other ways, if you, if you minimize respect to G, right, this thing, this has a minimum for G equal to G, where G is, you assume that it doesn't depend on G tilde. So if you assume that G doesn't depend on G tilde, mm -hmm. right, and you minimize this with respect to G tilde, you need to this trace term to get that big. I have to say that actually there are two different actions one could take. This action and this action where G tilde in, in this picture, like naive picture in which G doesn't depend on G tilde, G tilde wants to be G to the minus one. Okay? So in one sense, in one case you try to smooth, so to reduce the, smooth out the, the mass field, and in other, in another case you want to segment. Okay, so for instance in image recognition, you want your this image with the noise, you use the diffusion to remove the noise, but you don't want to diffuse over the boundary. So you want a metric that goes to zero if the gradient are high, and in the same time you want to increase the gradient there. In that case you need the choice plus. But for the moment we discuss the choice minus. The, the equation of motion will be more or less similar just with the minus the difference. So, sorry, uh, kinetic terms here. Kinetic terms are here. Are this. Because uh, this will lead you to the Laplacian. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, when you have the Dirac, it's. Okay, ah, uh, no, you. So, here you will get uh, an equation without t, without time. Yes, okay, that's yeah. what I want. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, including time. Is, 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 is tricky because including time would mean that you need to have a Lorentzian space time. So the picture is that actually you are, and, 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 and practically time in this picture would be another direction of the uh, link. Okay, so you have space time and you will have a network that is space time. So you have a direction that is x and a direction that is time, right? So, practically, it's like uh, dx, dy. What we discussed that you can do the direction, the derivative in direction x and in direction y. You might have dt, and you can treat it as you want. If you are Euclidean, so if you do the Euclidean, this doesn't change. It's practically the same as this. If, if you want to do Lorentzian, you should, you should be a little bit careful. So when I wrote the, Dirac, the paper on the Dirac equation, I also considered the Lorentzian case. And there is a nice thing because um, there, like my understanding is that practically, I mean, in quantum gravity, for what I understand, there is a debate about space time links and time light links. And, they are different, if they are equal. But what I convince myself, of course I can change my mind, but what I convince myself is that there is no such a thing as a time-like and space-like link. It's only 
the DIRA cover interacting on it that changes. Yes. So practically you have a gamma matrix that is particular for the time-like links, and we make gamma D anti amitian while the other gamma D, gamma X DX will be Dermitian. But in this paper I don't consider time direction. But you can assume this is space time. But of course, you know, maybe you want to put a continuous time there or something like that. I have not done this. Sorry, maybe one naive question. We are calling this quantum relative entropy just because this is, I mean, first matrices. because we are working with matrices. Ah, okay, that's it. Yeah. So there is no quantization here yet. Of course, uh, a nice idea would be if this matrix, this metric matrix could be quantized. And I think for density matrix, if you, if you think like something like this, you can imagine it quantize something like this, but it's not done. For the moment, there's is no second quantization. I mean, this is all very new. I mean, the, the, the volume term I put it in on Monday, <laughs> included on Monday, so, so then, very fresh. Okay, so stop here. And shall we come back at, uh, for the past? Yeah. No, 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 but this is the spirit, right? This yeah. is amount that you, that you want the gauge field generated by the charge. Let me say like this. To, to be compensating this term, which is the gauge field generated by the metric. That's the way into this. Okay, good. Yeah, then, yeah, then, no, then. I, no, I mean, discuss. Maybe you see something I don't see. <laughs> Water. <laughs> because what I don't understand is uh, what's the goal here? She wants to study, and she's a fan of idea. There is a. First, uh, I was expecting something more like classical field theory and echo to the space time, generalized to something more uh, so to a uh, higher order stuff. And now she's uh, introducing this uh, we have just expected G all these terms to, yeah. to appear in S, not in the in the long Yeah, I don't I mean I'm also confused why it's called the action I mean to me it's an entropy, but I don't know if they are exchanging the the terms. Okay, yeah. Like but, I mean, quantum, quantum, this, this object, I already saw trace of uh, some, I mean, trace of A log of A minus trace of A log of B is, is something, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's right. It's called a relative entry. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's trace of G times uh, log of G, or, or is a uh, trace of uh, an S number. So it's uh, G times log of G, all traced. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. So I had to also want to check the ambience. Yeah. Do you get any new results or is it still? I, I have some results. No, it's uh, still Maybe we'll just check like uh, how we define the volume of the Yeah. 
Do you want to do it now? Or Alright, in my class, uh, just, uh, so I don't know anything about the Dirac equation. Um, I mean, I know like general stuff, but like, are psi and phi referring to something specific? Yeah, they are something different. Okay. So this is, uh, this is some topological spinner. Right. This is another one. Okay. This is a function, the polynomial that's a triangle. Uh -huh. This is another function. Okay, but why? Okay, so, so you can assume that this is a boson. Okay. This is a fermion. Although we, we are not quantizing yet, but. Okay. Now, just because they they look, I mean, they're distinct things here, right? Yes. Like, yes, we are mixing things. Okay, so this is bosonic and this is fermionic. That's what you're saying. And then you have eta and you have theta, uh, theta and you have m. Yeah. And then are these subscripts? Zeros. I'm, I'm just a no, bit lost. No, these are ad adamant products. So adamant. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, I totally missed that. Okay. So and then this is M zero. Okay, that one's M zero. M zero. This is M F. Okay. 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 Zero. M boson. Okay. These are other coefficients. I actually you can put the coefficient all together. Okay, I see. Okay, thank you. So you you write the same to be the sum of these are sum of projectors. Sure, sure, no, yeah, yeah, I get that. Essentially, you can also add something that is not a projector if you add this curvature and things like that. But essentially, for the now, it's a sum of projectors. Yeah, yeah, I just wasn't sure what it seemed like. This was implied as if like it's like a standard notation or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you.